All right. Good morning, guys. How we doing? Welcome back. Happy Thursday. Happy, happy Thursday. Hello to all the familiar faces. Brian English, number one in the chat today. Howdy. <laughs> Good morning, guys. Bonjour. Buenos dias. Thought it was Friday? I wish it was Friday, man. I wish it was. Almost there. Almost there. Yeah, yeah. Wepa. <laughs> Morning, guys. Doing good, doing good. Nice last few days for sure. Definitely uh, got that confidence back, got that swagger back over the last two days. So it's good, man. Got some new shirts coming out, Marvin. Shout out, Marvin. A little magic powder in my nose. <laughs> if you guys are doing magic powder at 8 o'clock in the morning, man. <laughs> that's, uh, that's another story. Uh, NVIDIA should pump. Market ain't pumping. In. Nothing's pumping unless you get over some levels on the market, guys. Pay attention to the market. Market has still not even got above yesterday's highs. Still turning Tuesday's lows into rejections. So you're going to need a, a little bit of a different market today if you're expecting things to pump. Great time in the Discord learning a lot. I appreciate that, man. Happy to hear that. New mats on the cart. Yeah, I love that thing. I love that thing. I've driven, I think, 100 miles already on that golf cart. All right. Good morning, guys. Welcome back as everyone steps in. Press that like button as you guys come in. Appreciate that. Those early likes. Um, yesterday... <laughs> hey, I, I, there's really nothing else we could say about yesterday, right? Um, the exact same level again. The 433 on the queues, we said watch 433, and that was just awesome. It was awesome. The levels are leveling. Um, the rejections yesterday off the same exact levels from, from, uh, from Tuesday, it was perfection. So... What a day. What a morning. Got us some nice follow-through downside yesterday morning off the exact same levels. I hope you guys were able to catch some of that. Uh, our 503, 502 level on SPY worked out really nicely later day. So overall, just a really clean day to the downside. And even the pop later in the day back to the upside was another nice rejection off some key levels again. So just an overall textbook day in terms of technical levels. And uh, if you guys have been paying attention to them and have been charting them, you absolutely should have seen it on your charts as well. So congrats on that. Um, today, let's look to do the same thing. Let's watch the levels again because as we are talking here in the morning, we are seeing reactions at the exact levels again. So we have some clarity here already in the pre-market on what to watch, which I love to see. Um, of course, we do have some economic data this morning at 8.30. We also had TSM earnings overnight, you know, this morning. Um and uh, we have Netflix earnings after hours today. So we do have some things out there. Arm, oh my God, arm. Arm under 120, man. What a absolute killer trade that was. I I should have went for it. Um, I just, arm scares me. So, you know, some like I trade the same, the same stocks every day, right? I know how certain stocks move. I'm very comfortable. I know what to expect. Um, arm is sort of a wild card. So I said, you know what, let me stay away from this thing. Uh, and pff, what a sick downside that was under 120. Congratulations to anyone that took that. That was nuts. So big break there on arm and, uh, some pretty heavy selling under that key 120 level. Um, all right. So we'll look at it again today. 
look at everything again today. Let's go ahead and start by pulling up the economic calendar. That's where we always start. And uh, let's kick it off. So here we go. Uh, today is Thursday. Not Friday. Wish it was. Uh, you guys can see right here. Unemployment claims, 830. That's probably our major event of the day. You got some Fed FOMC members speaking sort of right before open. We'll see what that does. Excuse me, 9 o'clock, 9.15. Um, existing home sales, 10 o'clock. Yeah, the IMF meeting's been going on all week. Nothing really important there. Natural gas storage, if you trade oil, keep an eye on that at 10.30. Whoops, what did I do? Okay, 10.30. And then some more Fed, Fed FOMC members later in the day. So nothing major here, guys. Friday, it looks like we got nothing too, which is nice to see. A little bit of a, finally, the talking heads stop talking, right? A little bit of, you know, let's rest our mouths a little bit here and stop talking every goddamn day. Uh, so it looks like uh, no meetings there on, fr nothing really on Friday. Well, I guess they will still be talking at this meeting. But nothing too major here on the economic tomorrow. Really, the last big thing of the week is this unemployment claims. Um, so... Let's see what happens there at 8.30. All right. Um, let's go ahead and pull up that earnings calendar. There's really only two major one, or really one major one left, and that is today, guys. Today's really the major Netflix earnings, right? That's pretty big, right? That's a big one. That's a big tech earnings. That's a big one for the market. Definitely important uh, for the overall feeling of the, of the market. So you guys can see this morning, TSM, BlackRock, um, DR Horton, which is a builder, we had some this morning. Nothing really I'm that, I'm in, not that interested in. Um, but TSM, let's see how that affects the semiconductors this morning. Semiconductors seem to be sort of chilling. They're really not doing too much this morning. A little bit of upside, a uh, little bit of downside on TSM. Nothing that's really set in stone, I don't think, yet on that uh, semiconductor morning. But TSM seemed to have a good report. Uh, some concerns about growth, uh, they said, but seems to... You know, a little bit down in the pre-market, nothing crazy. Today, after hours, Netflix, that's a big one. Keep an eye on that. Be careful of that. I would not trade that. Um, TSM already released earnings. Uh, tomorrow, American Express, Procter Gamble, and that's the end of the week. All right? Next week, a lot of earnings next week. Let me see if I have, do I have the full calendar for next week? Uh, Breadman, I don't think he had it yet. Yeah, I don't think I have that whole month calendar here. No. All right. So we'll get that we'll get that calendar coming in next week, but next week is a big a big uh big week for earnings. All right. All right. Let's uh let's jump into it. Let's start with the NQ. So, what did NQ do yesterday? Well, it did the exact same thing it did the day prior, man. It rejected the exact same level. So let's go into the 30-minute chart and look at this on the 30. You guys can see right here. You guys knew we had that 18,000 level, right? We had that 18,000 on our on our, uh, on our our charts. And you can see pre-market upside. What did it do? Went right into supply. Bam. Beautiful. Exactly what we want to see, right? Perfect rejection of the Tuesday highs. Same exact level on Wednesday. And we shorted that 433 yesterday on Qs and an absolutely beautiful downside. We went down into the 17.8 demand, right? Down into that 17.8 demand. Had a little bit of drama, right? If we go to the five-minute chart, we could see it tried to hold on. It did its best. It tried. The bulls tried to maintain this 17.8 level for a little bit yesterday. A little bit of drama here at the 17.8. Ultimately, failing to hold, right? And look at how clear... This is just beautiful right here yesterday. Look at how clear the rejections were after we broke under 17.8. Look at this right here. All right, this is the two-minute chart. This was intraday yesterday. This was around uh, 11.20, 11.30 uh, a.m. Eastern time. You guys can see we tried to maintain that 17.8. After we dropped below it, we had some nice rejections here, right? And bam, that was it, All right? And so... This is something I want to, uh, this is actually a really good example here, guys. This is not something I should talk about for free, but I'll do it anyway, because this is really something you should study right here. Why should you study this action right here? Why is this important to pay attention to? So right here, guys, you can see we did have one break under 17.8, right? And we and that could have got you in, right, if you chased that first candle to the downside. But what do we like to wait for before just starting to slam, you know, certain directional trades? We like to wait for the retest 
and we like to wait some time for some clear rejections to step in, right? Maybe three, four, five two-minute candles really showing us that it's not able to get back or not able to get back above. Now, this in this instance, right, you had the drop. You don't take a trade. You wait to see what happens when we trade back into it. Well, we had a green candle, a strong green candle, no rejections, and then bam, straight back up, right? So this right here, I mean, you, if you, the only reason to get faked out here is that you just chased downside, right? Said, oh, I'm short because we broke it, right? That's how you get faked out. That's a fake out. And the only reason you get faked out here is because you didn't stay patient to wait for rejections to show up. Now, if you looked at, you know, maybe 20 minutes later, look what happened when it actually rejected. You got your break. You got your retest. Rejection. Rejection. Push back higher. Rejection, right? You got some clear, you know, candles that couldn't get back above. And so then, right, then you could take your shot after saying, hey, we've rejected like four times here, five times here. I now, I, now I can have some confidence that that level is not able to get back above. And now I can look to short, not just on a quick up and down, right? This is where a lot of people lose money because they don't have the patience to wait for that, that, that clear rejection. They feel like when they see this candle, right, they're just going to miss it, right? Guys, the market doesn't just do this, Okay. You have to understand that. The market does not, at times it will, right? There'll be some outlier days where it's just bam, straight down. Of course, but you know what? You don't catch those moves, whatever. It is what it is. 90% of the time, the market's going to break, come back up, and then show you an entry point. You don't need to feel like you're going to miss something because the market's just going to go straight down, right? So this is a straight down move. You needed to wait for the retest to show you something. It did not. This time it got back under. Then it actually showed you the rejections. So... Something to pay attention to, guys. It's going to save you a lot of money if you could just wait, right? Just wait for something to really show clear. This is the exact spot. And by the way, if you guys were paying attention, this is the exact spot we took the SPX puts yesterday on the on the voice chat in the Discord and just nailed that downside. So this was it, right? That was the clear next leg lower yesterday. And so congratulations to those who caught that. Um, all right. So today, right, what are we doing? What are we doing here in the pre-market, guys? Um, while we are sort of trying to dance around this 100 SMA, and while we do still have some demand down below at 17.6, there's something very clear that's happening. We are failing to get back above yesterday's lows. Or, I'm sorry, Tuesday's lows, okay? This is very important. This is exactly what's happened in this area, and it's starting to happen here. What does this look like to you, right? Remember our market structure? This is stair step one, stair step two, right? We are stair stepping down. OK, as long as we stay in this stair stepping downward action, do not try to play upside. OK, what you need the market to do now, if you're looking for the bounce or the reversal or you're looking for that um, push back to the upside. Um, uh, uh, best wishes, Larry. Hope you're all right, man. Take notes from the ER. Hope you're good, brother. Um. What you need the market to do here, right, is you need it to switch this sort of uh, channeling, right? So you need to get back above. You need to re-enter this previous stair step. Then you can look for the, okay, hey, maybe now is that reversal time. So I would not look for the market to go higher, guys, unless you are back above 17.8, right? At the very minimum, at the very minimum, at the very minimum, you need at least the NASDAQ to get over 17.8 and get back into this consolidation range before you can attempt to long this market. Until then, the stair steps will continue to stair step, right? And if we continue to make previous lows into new highs, that is bearish and you will stay bearish, okay? This is the same thing to the upside, right? We talked about this as the market was going higher. The market will continue to go higher as long as it stair steps to the upside, right? So this is the inverse of the NASDAQ, okay? This is inverse NASDAQ right now. So we have channel, right? And we're creating a higher channel. As long as the market's doing this, right, it's going higher. Unfortunately, you know, for those that want to see it go higher, uh, this is the inverse of the NASDAQ. So the actual NASDAQ is doing this, right? So as long as you're under this 17.8, I would not try to be the, the Nostradamus guy out there trying to long this market. Uh, if you can get back above 17.8, then you can start to look for it, right? Maybe for a push back into that 18,000. So 17.8, major level today on NASDAQ, 18,000, still a rejection up there today. To the downside, right, we got that 17.6. And, of course, just be a little bit careful 
into that 100 SMA on NASDAQ. That is a little bit of a dance zone here, all right? A little bit of concern on how strong the follow-through will be for you guys today at this 100 SMA. All right, so here's something to pay attention to as well, guys, just to sort of give you, you know, maybe some expectations for the day. Um, after the big drop on Monday, it followed by a total sideways move, right? So this is how the market sometimes likes to move, right? So big drop followed by consolidation. Yesterday, drop. What's the trend here, right? What could we expect today? We might expect consolidation today, all right? That might just be uh, what we get today. This is big drop, consolidation, drop, consolidation, right? And maybe tomorrow we get our next drop or tomorrow we get our move. Today could be consolidation with Netflix earnings after hours, right? Maybe a little bit of just sort of balanced range today. Just be aware of that. That's very possible, all right? But some very clear levels, right? 17.6, 17.8. You're in about a 200-point range. You had the 100 SMA right there. So I could see it, right? If I had to, if I put some betting odds on it, I'd say there's like a, I'd put a 60% chance that you stay in this range today. I'd go a little bit on the, you know, I'd go, I'd take the the over, right? <laughs> if there's an over under, I'd take the over. Uh, the over likelihood, whatever you want to say, however you want to bet this. Uh, this is just for jokes, by the way. I would say there's a, a better likelihood that you stay within this channel. Uh, with the 17.8, the 17.6, 100 SMA right there, big drop yesterday. Likelihood, I think, is some channel trading. So just be aware of that. QQQ. <laughs> Can't say much else, man. What a beautiful 433. You guys know we've been screaming and hollering 433 this week. And uh, man, what a sexy rejection that was yesterday. 433 rejections all day on, on Tuesday. You guys saw my video, how we scalped that 433 uh, on Tuesday. Well, we did it again yesterday. We saw the 433 rejections coming in early morning, and bam, just a beautiful downside move. Um, I'll show you why I took those puts yesterday really quickly. I'll show you the reactions that I saw early morning at 433 that got me interested. You guys can see right here, right? This was really the candle right here. So we opened the morning. We had a little drop under 433, but we had some wicks, right? So I was a little concerned. I said, oh, you know, I'm not going to take this yet. Way too early. Seeing a lot of bullish wicks pushing back higher. And, you know, this could result in one of those drops and pops. And I don't want to get stuck in that, right? I don't want to be shorting after seeing some of these little, you know, these bullish wicks showing up. So I waited. We got that pop, but that pop... If it wanted to go, that pop needed to really move. And that pop instantly got just sort of rejected heavily at that 433. And at that point, I went ahead and I got short. So we got short those QQQ puts, had our stop over 433, used that same level, and the rest is history, man. Really nice stuff. Wish I held those a little bit longer. I was maybe a little bit too timid on those yesterday. Uh, got a little bit of a move, but did not catch the whole thing by any means. So unfortunate there. That wasn't. That was the wrong day. Here's. I was looking at uh, the wrong day. This is the one. Um, so I took a little bit of a profit. You know, I was profit taking into the drop, but man, definitely could have held a little bit longer there. So, is what it is, right? That's uh, that's trading, and you can't chase perfection, man. You cannot chase perfection. You can't chase perfection in trading. Um, so, very nice 433 rejection. Well, what did we have, right? We had the lows at 429.50, 430, and look at what the NASDAQ's doing today, right? Break, retest, and we're starting to reject. What is this doing? It is stair-stepping to the downside, and as long as we're under this 429.50, 430 area, this market is going to stay weak. So you guys can see right here, watch those previous lows, that 429.50, 430, um, and if we're under that, right, continue to look for those rejections over there. Uh you guys can see right there, okay? So next level down below is our 425 demand. We have our 429.50, 430 supply above. And what did I say about the NASDAQ? Well, probably the likelihood. I would say there's a high likelihood that we sort of chill in this range today. Uh, but that could create some really nice channel trades, right? We could see maybe a little morning pop into the supply and then get a little rejection. We could get a drop into that 425 demand. Maybe there's a little long, right? There might be some nice channel trading today. To be, to be aware of, and you just got to know your channel, right? So um, I'm trying to decide. I, I haven't quite, you know, f decided in 
tr- like in with a lot of confidence whether this is 42950 or 430 for now I'm going to keep it at 42950 because I am seeing the reactions there right 42950 42950 42950 yesterday up into that 42950 so I like the 42950 I'd also say 430 could have some rejections as well um but for now I'm going to keep it at 42950 all right ES same exact level again. You, I mean, you guys. I hope you guys are seeing this, right? It's this is really nice when the market does this. This is textbook stuff and definitely catchable action, right? You can see yesterday what we get pre market upside right into the previous day highs and right into our major supply. Bam, rejection, beautiful stuff. Uh, yesterday when we got under that fifty eighty, that was really it, right? We got under that fifty eighty. We had a rejection of fifty eighty, and that was the next big move to the downside. So. 5080, big downside move. You guys can see 5080 right here. And what are we doing this morning? We're still rejecting 5080. So today, if the ES is under 5080, we are still looking for the downside action, right? If we're under 5080, if we're under these lows, right, and under this high, we are still looking for the downside action under 5080, probably back down towards the 5050 demand, okay? Under 5050, you have the 100 SMA at 5020. So, 50-80, 50-50, Those are my levels today. If you get above 50-80, you probably move up towards that 5127 again. That's possibly a upside move if we do get that break over 50-80. Now, let me make sure you understand. 50-80 is not just sort of short-term level. This is a big level here, 50-80. Uh, let me show you why. So 50-80 is, I got to move this line over. Extend that to the left. If I put this over, let me go ahead and zoom in over here and show you why 5080 is actually a very important level. So this is back in February 7th to around uh, February 21st. So pretty much all of February. Now look at what happened at 5080 in February. It's very, it's a, it was a very good level back in February. You can see right here, 5080 rejections support. We broke back under it, caused big downside, got back into it. You can see some short-term rejections, but we ended up holding above it, right? So this was a very influential area. Rejections, support, uh, support here, support here. When we got back under it, caused downside. When we got back under it here, caused downside, right? So it was a very influential level back here in February, 5080. And that is why I think, you know, that's why at least yesterday it, or the last few days, we've tried to hold it, right? You've tried to hold it here at 5080. You failed to hold it. And now you're rejecting it. So big level there on ES, guys. Don't don't long if we're under 5080. I just don't, you know, you could. I'm not saying there's not long opportunities, guys, right? There's always going to be intraday longs, you know, for little scalps. But the overall trend of the market, the overall, you know, the longer term view here, when you zoom out and you're not on the 15 nanosecond chart, uh, the trend is that if you're under 5080, uh, you're going lower, okay? Thank you, brother. <laughs> Did you guys watch, uh, you, you had to watch some clips from their stream last night. Sketch, Queso, and Jinxie. That was funny, man. <laughs> They're jokes. Um, so, anyways, uh, Spy, you guys can see right here. Pretty nice. 507 rejections yesterday. Exact same highs from Tuesday. Coming in as highs on Wednesday. That's beautiful stuff right there. We got under that 503 level yesterday. And after we rejected that 503, you guys can see right here. I'll go into the two-minute time frame. And uh, you guys can see right here. Look at this 503 rejection yesterday. This was a thing of beauty. This is why we took the SPX puts, actually. It was right here. This is the exact reason we took the SPX puts yesterday right there. That was sexy. So you can see we had that little fake-out drop under 503. We got under 503 again. And look at the rejections that showed up. Right. Look at this candle right here. This is your death candle right here. You have this little flag under 503, right? You have that death candle, and that is the continuation, right? And that's what caused the downside. So 503 rejection yesterday, thing of beauty, very nice catch. Congratulations if you caught that. And then you can see today, look at what we're doing. We're still under 503. So under 503, guys, is no bueno. No bueno for upside. You got to get over 503. If you're looking for that larger term move to the upside, you got to get back above this 503. If you can, then maybe we can get that move back into 507. 
Um, but if you're under 503, I would say path of least resistance is down back into this low at 498.50, 499. All right. All right. Russell, Russell Wilson. Uh, Russell Wilson's right at the 200 SMA. Big level here for the Russell. Um, yeah, damn, it's just chilling right there, isn't it? Huh. Yeah, you are just sitting right at the 200 on the Russell, guys. So keep an eye on this today. If you get a clear rejection under the 200, that could be a nice uh, short side entry there. 200 SMA Russell, 1965. Keep an eye on that. Uh, Dow Jones, Mike Jones, Daniel Jones, rejections, 38,300. Pretty clear there. All right, and we're just continuing this stair step lower. So just the stair step continues to stair step. Um, 38,3 to 37,8. That's your range today, right here. 38,3 to 37,8. That's your range on the Dow. All right, all right. We got uh, we got job with or yeah, job with scans, right? Unemployment data, whatever they call it. The, the they call it two different things. Forex Factory calls it unemployment and uh, unemployment claims. Market Watch calls it jobless claims. So pretty much the same thing. Unemployment and jobless, pretty much uh, same word there. So <laughs> whatever it is, um, we got that in four minutes. If you guys could. Press that like button for me. Subscribe to the channel. Um, let's go into, let's talk about the TNX real quick uh, while we, you know, try to kill some time here. So yesterday we had a 10-year, 20-year bond auction. You guys saw that around 1 o'clock yesterday. And we did get some downside on the, uh, we did get a little bit of downside on the 10-year yesterday because of that bond auction. It was right around here. So we sort of got like a little downside move there, um, which I think sort of, after that bond auction, you guys saw the market sort of cool down a little bit to the downside. It was right here. Um, Black Monty, Ray, TJ, who else? Thank you guys for joining the stream. Appreciate that, guys. Thanks for the support. Black Monty, Ray, and TJ. Thank you, guys. Um, so right here, you got a little bit of reaction to the downside on the TNX after that, uh, or the 10-year after that bond auction. It really, it sort of cooled down the selling to end of day a little bit. Uh, but you can see today we're sort of curling back up. So, um, yeah, ten year. This is still a problem, right? This sort of this sort of the strength that we're still seeing here in the ten year, holding above like that four and a half level, four point five ten year. If we still hold above this, right, and move back higher, it's gonna keep putting pressure on the market. So that ten year rising, keep an eye on that. Uh, how about the S and P five hundred, man? If you don't think I've already looked at that, you're crazy. Um, so 10 year, let's go to the dollar. What's that dollar looking like? Dollar sort of holding up a little bit of downside yesterday. Not much holding up slightly. Um, all right. What do we got? Two minutes. VIX still elevated. I don't want to get into stocks yet, but man, <laughs> man, that Tesla weekly chart. Congrats. If you guys caught that, remember we talked about this weekly chart on Tesla. Remember we talked about this right here? Little bear flags, double bear flag. Gotta love that, right? Little double bear flag on Tesla Weekly. That thing's following through. What a beautiful double bear flag. Double black diamond. Hit him with an ad? Sure, we'll hit him with an ad. We still haven't gotten to 1,000 likes, so it's time to hit him with an ad. All right, we got one minute till data. We're just going to wait out that data. And then we'll get back to the ESNQ. Take a look at what's going on here. Um, let's keep up the we'll keep up the ES. Actually, you know what? Yeah, why not? Let's keep the ES up here. Wait for that data to come out in about forty seconds. If you guys could press that like button for me, try to get us to a thousand likes. We're trying to get to eighty thousand subs, man. We're trying to get to eighty thousand subs. If you guys could press that subscribe button. If you're not subscribed, if you guys come here every day and are not subscribed. You, you hurt my feelings. That hurts me, okay? <laughs> uh, we need 50 subscribers. Wow, we're almost there. 50 subs. All right, we got 15 seconds till the data comes out here. Let's see what the reaction is. Uh, tech expert, I do not, I don't, 
this I don't discount the work that we do in there, so no. Okay, market is going nowhere. <laughs> uh, not much of a reaction here as of yet. Little upside, little downside. Two twelve versus two fifteen. Thanks for always posting the uh Hamas. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate that, Hamas. You know what, Hamas? We're gonna put Hamas as a mod. <laughs> Hamas, Hamus, you're now a mod. Welcome to the mod squad. I appreciate that. You save me a lot of time every morning, so if you could keep coming around and posting that date, I'd love that. <laughs> All right. So, a uh, little bit. Not much. Spy is ripping. Yeah. Yeah, it's ripping. <laughs> um, yeah, not really. Okay. Arm. Yeah, arm still moving lower. All right. So, let's go to Spy. Spy is uh, in no man's land. So, as long as it's under 503, this is all meaningless. NASDAQ. Meaningless, meaningless moves here on the data, and the levels still stay intact. All right, all right, let's get into some stocks. All right, Tesla, man, 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 what a beautiful, I mean, pretty textbook day yesterday. It was way too quick off the open, so no trades there, right off our 154 level. But yes, but later in the day, you guys can see right here, right? Look at this later in the day push back into that rejection and look at that fade, man. What a beautiful pop back into that rejection point later in the day. And if you guys were still sort of monitoring Tesla, I know it was late in the day, but sometimes those opportunities do arise. And uh, that is just perfection right there, right? Previous highs here, that was where we faded right off of early morning. Look at the pop back into this level. Perfect rejection right at that 154 again. And that entry point would have resulted in where you are now, right? So if you said, hey, I'm going to short Tesla off this 158 level, and I'm going to look to fade this again. Maybe I'll even swing trade this. Uh, beautiful trade, man. Beautiful trade. What a rejection at that level again. You can see we are now under 154. And uh, if you're under 154, that is not good for Tesla. So you need to be under, if you're under that 154, I would look for a pop and fade, okay? So I'm not going to short Tesla into this 150 low. That's for sure, okay? That is definitely for sure. I have no interest in shorting Tesla into a low, especially after already major downside pre-market. I mean, this is down 3% already pre-market, so no interest there to short Tesla today on that. If we get a little fake pop, though, right? If we get one of these, you know, one of these little pops, if we get one of those morning pops into that 154, absolutely watch this guys this is where you should be watching today if you can get tesla either back up into 154 maybe it's up into like could be the 155s right it could be sort of like that pre-market area right here see this little pre-market consolidation it might be up into the 155 but either way if you get pops into these previous lows guys that's where you're looking right you're looking for those refades at 154 155 today I would not short Tesla into a hole, okay? I would not short Tesla into a hole at 150. Let this thing pop. Get better value for your trade, right? This is something you want to sort of think about. Try to think about, you know, the value you're getting for the position you're taking, right? You get a lot of value trying to short after a pop up here at 154, 155. It's not much value down here, right? You're shorting into a hole. So let's go ahead and, you know, require value on our positions. And I like value right up here around 154, 155, that's where I'd say, okay, let me go ahead and take a shot now. Uh, so that's what I'd wait for personally. That would be my personal recommendation. If you're not short Tesla already, uh, you know, you got to accept you're not in it because it's already down three and a half pre-market. I'm going to assume there's a morning pop somewhere in there. And uh, that's where I would look for that trade. All right. NVIDIA, man, uh, I was in an NVIDIA put yesterday morning and I didn't hold on to it. I just sort of took a quick profit, and I definitely regret it. Um, I was very confident. You guys know we were talking about this on the live stream yesterday. If you pay attention, 
if you pay attention with half your brain, <laughs> you know that we were saying do not long NVIDIA into the 20 SMA. Be careful of the 890 rejection point. And holy crap, man, that was beautiful. So congrats if you guys uh, sort of stuck with that game plan yesterday. I did not. Um, but 890, what a beautiful rejection point yesterday on NVIDIA. Faded all day right off that 890 level. That was sexual. So congrats on that one. Dropped under 873, dropped under 855. You're now under 855. And if we go into that 15-minute chart, we can see that's going to be the level to watch today. So you have this 855 previous low now turning into somewhat of a high. Um, if NVIDIA stays under this 855, you can still look for that rejection play. But I would say eh, it's a little bit too down for me to be getting too interested in the short side right now. I don't really like the shorts into this 50 SMA here on NVIDIA around that 835. So I'd be a little bit cautious there. Um, if NVIDIA can pop back over that 855 level and, you know, sort of get back higher, you could look for sort of the re-entry maybe up here towards that 875, 874 area. That could be like a re-entry short. Um, or, right, if you like the upside, you can look for the pop over at 855, right, and a continuation move. But I think the trade really that you wanted to be in was here on these pops, right? Pop and fade, pop and fade. This is probably going to require another pop somewhere. So I would say probably 875 area is where I'd look for NVIDIA maybe for the next pop and fade. I don't think I'd short it too close to this 830, 850 demand. You guys can see we are at that four-hour channel low again, right? Remember we talked about this channel low. Don't think I want to be you know, too short, like right into here. I'd rather be short on the upside moves, right? Sort of fading the upside pops, moving it back down into demand, right? You want to be short at the peaks, moving down back into this demand. You don't want to just start shorting at the lows here. So I'm going to let NVIDIA sort of pop up higher today. I think that's maybe what it does after that drop yesterday, after coming down to this 50. You could watch if you're looking for short-term scalps and you think NVIDIA is going to stay very weak. You could look for that 855 rejection, but just understand an 855 rejection is still very close to that channel low demand. All right. AMD, man, bled out, and what a, <laughs> what a perfect level. What a perfect level. This is, what, this is what should get you excited, man, versus profits. You should get excited by looking at the charts because this is so catchable, right? This is not something that is rocket science to figure out. 165, 165, 165, 165. Four days in a row, the exact same level rejection. That is what you should be looking for. That is what you should be looking and sort of scouting out on the market. That's the stuff that's going to make you money. If you can understand where the levels are and what's the level to play off of, that was beautiful. And congratulations to anyone that played that 165 rejection because you got paid. You got paid heavily. Um, so very nice there on AMD yesterday. You can see right here, this 159 low, that's where I'd look for AMD to pop into and then look to fade again. That's the only trade you have on AMD today. Okay. Pop and fade 159. It's the only trade here. This is too much downside. You're not going to short into the lows at 150. Look for the pop, look for the fade. That's what you're looking for. 159. That's my target today. SMCI holding up. Um, I'm sort of playing this failed breakout on SMCI. I'm looking to see if this is a failed breakout from yesterday. You guys can see a lot of people got excited on SMCI to break this little wedge action yesterday or the day prior. Yesterday, it failed that breakout pretty nicely. So I'm basically looking for SMCI to do the exact same thing and trade back down to this little channel low, right? So you can see we've had this little wedge here on SMCI. It tried to pop above it yesterday. It failed. And so I'm looking to see if SMCI is going to continue on that failed breakout. We'll see what happens. Um, today, SMCI is still holding above some key support levels, which you can see right around this 945 area and that 50 SMA. So I'd keep an eye on that, right? If SMCI holds right here, this 945 right here, this 50 SMA, it could sort of move higher off that level. Um, it looks like that $1,000 mark is going to be the heavy mark for SMCI. So... I'd watch that $1,000 mark. You can see right there that failed uh, that failed move above that trend right there. See how that failed right there? 
So if it pops into a thousand again today, I'd look to see if it fails again above at this thousand dollar level. Looks like it's probably just about in a 50 point range right now. All right, that's about what SMCI is doing. It's just chilling in this 50 point range between nine fo- 950 and 1000. All right. All right. Um, let's go to Qualcomm because Qualcomm's actually has a pretty interesting setup here. Four hour chart on Qualcomm. You can see we are at a major, major level. We're at fourth and inches here. All right. I think this is like fourth and inches for Qualcomm. If it breaks here, it's turnover on downs, man. Uh, under 163.50 right here in that 50 SMA. I think if we break under that, uh, I think you're going to move lower into like this 158 level. So not much re- not much action in between this 163 and 158 here. Really not much there on the charts. So if we, I'm just going to monitor today. Does Qualcomm get under 163.50? That's something I'm going to be watching. TSM uh, drop on earnings this morning, guys, and you popped down into the 134 demand, which is a big level for TSM. You can see right here, 134, 134, 134, and that's where you sort of held on the earnings move this morning. So I would say watch 134. If TSM breaks and holds under 134 today, that could be a sign of more downside. So make sure to have that 134 level on your on your charts today. Big level there. Uh, MU. Okay, this is something I'm starting to get interested in on MU, actually. Um, I think this could be sort of like a, a, a fading move that just continues to fade, to be honest. And there's something that's key that happened yesterday that I want to show you, or happening right now that I want to show you. So right here over the last three days, there is a flip. There's an important flip, and it's something to pay attention to. Where is it? It's right here. Right here, you can see the 20 SMA held on MU. That was on Tuesday. Yeah, uh, Wednesday, yesterday. You can see right here, 20 SMA tried to hold on MU. It did not, right? It tried. It tried. It did here, and it tried yesterday. It failed. And today, what is it doing? 20 SMA is now turning into a rejection point. That is the sign of a trend change, right? Um, and so I am not opposed to staying short MU here under 120 and under the 20 SMA, right? If you think that MU needs to start to fade some of this sort of, I would say pretty insane upside for MU, you know, for the stock it is, this is some pretty major upside move. Um, So I would say 120, watch that 20 SMA rejection. That's pretty big there, right? That's pretty big there. 120, 20 SMA rejection. If you can get under... If you can get under, I like the 117 level, but it might be like 116. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit unsure whether it's 116 or 117. I would just mark out the lows from yesterday, like around that 116.30. I would assume you probably trade back to at least this 114, right? Right here. See this high right here? I would say MU is going to at least attempt a 114 test, right? So 114 would be a target. If you break under 114, I think you have that 108 in you. Um, So yeah, interesting, right? I would say just watch MU at this 120, guys. This is a very important flip that you have going on here. 120, 120, and look at the rejections today at that 120. Uh, So this looks weak to me. Um, Guys, I know there's an $8 billion grant. I get it, okay? That does not affect the stock on technicals in the short term, okay? Um, you're not going to not short the 120 level for like a technical rejection in the short term because they have a uh, subsidy that the government gave them, okay? So if you if that's fundamental, that's a little bit more long-term, long-term company growth, right? This is a short-term technical rejection. So I'm going to look to play that 20 SMA rejection. We'll see if it shows up. Um, just be careful of that low from yesterday. Arm, <laughs> dead. Mort, mort. Arm is dead. It's not arm day. It is now leg day. Um, Under this 110, that's really bad for arm. Guys, the 120 break, we talked about arm 120 break. We talked about the the destruction that could happen under that, and that is exactly what happened. Arm got absolutely demolished under that 120 yesterday. Uh, Drop under that 110. If you hold under 110 today, I would say more downside. 
I would say maybe down into that 100 SMA and that 100 area. You have demand down here at 91. The only thing I'm going to say, this comes with a big disclaimer, guys. Big disclaimer here. Arm is an unknown stock. It's like sort of chasing, uh, you know, just something that's very spastic. I, I don't know exactly how Arm's going to trade. It's tough, right? Sometimes it's spastic. Yesterday was nice and clean, finally, but uh, this could be sort of jumpy. So just be careful of that, all right? Be careful of that on Arm. This is not just sort of a clean trading stock. I wouldn't mind seeing like a little pop in the 110 today, which could give us a better opportunity than just chasing this thing, right? So let's keep an eye on that one 110. With 110 level on Arm, let's see if it can pop back into there. So maybe there's a, you know, a rejection play there. Meta, um, so Meta, nice rejection. We talked about this one at that 504 level. That was a beauty yesterday. We're back into the 497 level, which held very nicely yesterday. So let me go into that five minute. So here's your little short-term watch on Meta, guys. You can see right here. Actually, it looks like it's like 499. I think I'd give it up to that. All right here's the only problem on meta which i don't like it's that that 50 sma there so you have some previous lows here right very clear lows lows highs 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 right around this 499 level which i think could be another short side rejection play today just be careful of that 50 all right that would be my only caution to you know to let you know about 492 493 could be a sort of a hold level here but there might be a little short-term rejection off that 499 today Microsoft was gorgeous. We talked about this five, this 420 rejection. What a beautiful um, what a beautiful short this was yesterday. We had that 420 major low turned into a perfect. I mean, perfect. Eh. I'm not going to talk about this one too much. I hope you see what I'm what I'm putting down here, man. This is uh, this is really nice. 420 major previous lows break retest. Bam, just beautiful stuff there. Um, that's the trades you're looking for right there on, on Microsoft. Beautiful there on Microsoft. Demand at 410. Be careful of shorting into 410. What would I look for? Look for another pop into 420 to short or look for a, sh a short under 410. So 420, 410, that's your channel. You guys know how to play channels. You need to look for the bounces to short at 420 or a break under 410. You could long 410. I would not long at 420. Amazon. <laughs> Beautiful again. There's so many nice stocks yesterday. So many nice setups. They all worked. Uh, we talked about this one yesterday. We talked about the bear flag on Amazon back into these lows at 185. That is sick, right? That's a sick trade right there. You got your bear flag move into the major previous lows, break, retest on the bear flag, rejection. That is uh, textbook stuff right there. What is Amazon doing today? It looks like it's possibly doing the exact same thing. 182 previous lows break bear flag is this going to do the same thing today we shall see watch 182 today on amazon that is also the 20 sma google signs of a bear flag here on google signs right you can see right here that 158 level was a big level you see some signs of that bear flag building is this the next move maybe down into that 155 and that 20 sma this is something I'd be watching today. Keep an eye on this 158. If we stay under that 158, this could be a setup down into that 20 SMA of 155. Very nice look there on Google as well. Coinbase, no interest on Coinbase. Coinbase needs to get back up into 235, guys. It's just something that has to happen before you can look to short it again in my eyes. Bitcoin held that 60,000. I would not short Coinbase into 60,000 on Bitcoin. Um... That is definitely a potential hold level for Bitcoin. And if Bitcoin holds that 60, Coinbase is going to hold this 206. So for me, I'm not going to short Coinbase back into this demand. I'm going to wait for some kind of crazy pop and then see if that fades again at 235. For me, this is a no trade on Coinbase. All right. I think that's about it. I think that's about it. Apple back down into the 167. That's a huge level for Apple today. Let's take a quick peek back on the NASDAQ. NASDAQ is still living ne underneath uh, the Tuesday lows around that 17.8. You're trying to dance at that 100 SMA still. You can clearly see that. That 100 SMA, guys. All right, if there's one piece of advice I'd say to you guys today, okay? And this is a, this is a pretty 
this is a pretty a solid piece of advice and something I'm going to live by myself today. This right here, by this 100 SMA, is going to be disgusting today, okay? You are going to get faked out a thousand times before this actually decides where it wants to go. Be careful trading as we sit on this 100 SMA on the NASDAQ. This is going to go a little up. It's going to pop back under, maybe go back up, pop back under, right? It's just going to do, look what it's doing right now, right? What it's doing right now, you're probably going to see more of at open. So be careful here, okay? Be careful at this 100 SMA on the ES or on the NASDAQ. Very difficult level to read. And it's going to be a lot of games being played there. Steve, I go over the SPY every morning as soon as the market opens. As soon as the stream opens, man. So you got to come here a little bit early, okay? Just to let you know, ES5080 is still under. SPY is still under 503. If you didn't, uh, if you're not here on time, you're going to miss the trades. You got to, if, you, if you're not here on time, then you're going to have to wait to rewatch the live stream. Uh, yelling SPY, yelling any ticker in the chat will not create, will not cause me to look at it, okay? I do not. Just look at things that are yelled at in the chat. Thank you guys again. I appreciate everything. I appreciate the support. I appreciate you guys coming here. If you could, press that like button. Subscribe to the channel. Help me get to 80,000 subs. Where are we at? All right. We need, uh, what is that? That is uh, 30, 34. 34 subs. Press that like button. Subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.